precise placement is the key to patient satisfaction with the Eversense system. Welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Brandon Andrew, and I'm a board certified and fellowship trained general and bariatric surgeon and fellow of the American College of Surgeons. Today, we're going to be talking about the insertion and removal of the Eversense sensor. There is a detailed video you can find online linked below, but we're going to be going over some tips and tricks that can help this process go smoother for you. More information about the benefits of the Eversense device itself will be in a separate video. The ideal location for sensor insertion is the fossa between the triceps and the brachialis just caudal to the deltoid muscle, but you can place it more anterior or posterior for patient preference. We place the patient in the lateral position, make sure they're comfortable, and clean the area very thoroughly with skin prep. We then drape the patient sterilely. Now it's important to have a great assistant who can pass you the tools into the sterile field. Eversense has created some tools which will help you place the sensor and we're gonna go through them in this video. At this point, you cycle and soak the insertion tool. This lets you insert the sensor easily. You can also purchase an insertion bundle that has things like scalpels, gauze, instruments, dressings, conveniently packaged for you to use during this procedure. Once your field is set, bring in your sensor. There are detailed sensor insertion and removal instructions available, and it's very important that you read and understand these. This video is just to go over some key points that may help you. The sensor is contained in its own plastic packaging, which allows it to be easily inserted into the cannula of the insertion tool. The sensor has to soak for five minutes, and during that time, you can prepare the patient, create the incision, create the pocket, and confirm hemostasis. All of those tasks take less than five minutes, and this way you won't be waiting long for the sensor to be ready. We give the patient some analgesia and give it a minute to take effect. When creating the incision at the marked site, it's very important to make a full thickness incision. You should feel a physical pop as the blade goes all the way through the layers of the skin. Creating the subcutaneous pocket is a key step. Insert just the tip into the incision and then lower your hands so that the blunt dissector is parallel to the skin. From there, insert the blunt dissector into the incision wiggling it back and forth along its long axis, but not fishtailing. You wanna create a nice cylindrical pocket parallel to the skin. Use a screwdriver motion to advance the blunt dissector. Again, this is a key step to ensure good sensor signal and ease of removal. It's a good idea to hold the blunt dissector in place to help you achieve hemostasis. Once you've removed the blunt dissector, again, hold pressure to help you achieve hemostasis. Don't move on to the next step if there's any oozing. Now using the insertion tool containing the sensor, insert the cannula into the incision, lower your hand parallel and advance into the pocket created by the blunt dissector. Then retract the slide to deploy the sensor into the pocket. Confirm visually that the sensor is no longer in the cannula and confirm by palpation that the sensor is seated nicely in the subcutaneous pocket. Finally, place steri strips and dressings. The insertion procedure takes about five minutes. Now let's talk about device removal. Removal of the Eversense device can be the more challenging aspect of the procedure for someone who's new to the system. It's helpful to think about device removal in five discrete steps. First, locate the sensor by palpation. If you cannot palpate the sensor, you cannot move forward with these steps, and I'll discuss further on in the video what to do in that circumstance. Next, stabilize the sensor. Place your index finger and thumb as indicated on the inset. You don't move your fingers from these positions until the procedure is completed. 
hold your fingers in these positions against the sensor to prevent it from moving while you're injecting local analgesia and making your incision. Make your incision just beyond the distal edge of the sensor. The incision needs to be about three millimeters away from the base of the sensor so that you can dissect down into the pocket and grab the sensor at its distal end on its long axis, similar to how it was placed. Next, use the straight clamp provided in the Eversense insertion and removal bundle. Dissect down gently through the tissues to the pocket. Again, it's very important to keep your index finger and thumb firmly against the sensor. This helps you control and keep track of the end of the sensor, which is your target. Once you get the jaws of your instrument around the sensor, firmly grasp it, and you may need to rotate your wrist as shown to remove it. Insertion of the new sensor follows the steps shown previously in this video and can be done in the same pocket from which you removed the prior sensor. I've had many patients who have removed the sensor and replaced a new one in the same pocket and they tell me that the signal and accuracy have remained excellent with this technique. Hopefully this view has been helpful showing you that all of the procedure steps are done parallel to the patient's skin. You don't want to dig down and place the sensor on an angle. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you cannot palpate the sensor, there are a few techniques you can try. Ultrasound is an effective tool for locating the sensor, which could facilitate removal. I would use the small part setting and a broad spectrum leaner probe. You could also consider using x-ray if you cannot visualize the sensor using ultrasound. However, it would be rare to need this, especially if the device was placed well to begin with. Some final thoughts on the Eversense insertion and removal procedure. First, optimal placement is essential for patient satisfaction and for easy removal. With an optimally placed device, you will get an excellent signal. Next, it's very important to have a good assistant. I'm very fortunate that I have a good assistant working with me. When you're first starting out with Eversense, it's important to go over the steps together and make sure you're both on the same page and know what steps are next. Next, strongly consider having ultrasound or other imaging available so you can take care of all potential patients. The first Eversense patient I met was referred to me from another physician who had trouble removing their sensor and I was able to remove it with additional imaging. Finally, understand that there is a learning curve to inserting and removing the device. However, experience improves placement accuracy, which improves sensor signal, removal, and patient satisfaction. I'm very fortunate to have begun placing the Eversense back when the sensor was a three month device. So I got a lot of repetitions with the same set of patients every three months. And their feedback has been that the signal strength has been excellent and the device has really helped them improve their glucose control. I hope this video has been helpful for providers new to the Eversense system. For any patients watching, we'd love to place your Eversense device and help you with your glucose control. Please contact us on the number listed on the screen. Thank you.